Good day, everybody. I'm Neil Steve Quintanar. I will be your resource person for the topic, Shaping Peace Together, 12 Lessons in Spreading Positivity in the Better Normal. First of all, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Immaculate Heart of Mary Academy, Ming Nanilia Cebu, for the invitation to be your resource speaker today. Um, it will always be an honor, and I'm very, very grateful to be able to share my life's purpose, and that is to share about what makes us happy and how can we live a flourishing life. I am actually a teacher in a university, and I teach happiness and well-being since 2010. Yes, there is a topic no? um, that I teach in the university. It talks about happiness and then talks about what makes us flourish, what makes us mentally healthy. That's very interesting, right? Okay. But first, you know, we psychologists, we are not mind readers. Okay? In fact, we ask questions. Huh? So we love asking questions. So um, I wonder, what is the state of your heart now from a zero to 10? And I want you to comment down below your answer. Do you feel right now to be broken, damaged, malfunctioning? Or are you depressed, disheartened, miserable, or unhappy, worried? Or maybe you are good, feeling joyful, feeling happy, okay? or maybe resilient and strong. And better yet, maybe you're flourishing. Where are you from 0 to 10? Comment down below. Okay? Now, I have asked this question a lot of times when I conduct my seminars. And usually, they are most people are actually in the 6 and then 8. And of course, there are also zero, there's also two, there's also four, and there are even people who are 10. Okay? And that's all right. Wherever you are in the scale, that will be okay. okay? Now, psychology have changed over the years. Um, before, psychology was looking at the zero, two, and four. What makes them damaged? What makes them broken? What makes them depressed? What makes them unhappy? And what can we do so that we can move from unhappiness or from depression to happiness? So psychology now also looks at what makes people happy, what makes people mentally healthy, what makes people flourishing. So psychology now is really the promotion of well-being of all humans. And that includes you as students, teachers, and colleagues in the school, employees. Okay? So, in other words, psychology is not just the study of weakness and damage. It is also the study of strength and virtue. Treatment is not just fixing what is broken. It is also nurturing what is best in us. In psychotherapy, or when, we con when I see clients for therapy and counseling, it is really not enough to remove the internal disabling conditions in life. But we must learn also to develop, to build, to strengthen the enabling conditions in life too. Okay? But before we can do that, let's just look back a little bit. Where are we now? Where are we now in our life? Where are we now in 2020? Seven months after the lockdown. Where are we now? Now, this picture, picture of 12 different scenes, I wonder what picture resonates with you during the pandemic. Are you a one? Are you a two? Are you a three right now? A four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a ten, a eleven, or a twelve. What have you been experiencing during the pandemic? Personally, I have moved from different pictures. Maybe at first I started with a, a one. When the lockdown 
was announced, I was I thought it was going to be a good break, a two week break. So it was it started out to be fun. Okay? It started out that hey, maybe um, there's no school, there's no work. I can have a few time for myself. But eventually, when the ECQ was announced and we were having a community uh, quarantine passes, I felt that I was trapped at home. I want to go out. So from one, I moved to a two. And then I started watching Netflix, binge watching, and I felt that I was a seven. I was just uneasy, getting bored in the house. And then there were also times that I was an 11 and even a 9. Sad that I cannot go out. Two and then I was even angry. Two months after I decided to you know, create small goals for myself, I started cleaning my, my closet, arranging my bookshelf, started learning how to cook, and then eventually jumping rope. So it made me put some little goals, and then do it on my own. So I felt that I was also a three. No? Not literal plantito, no? but I was being productive. But every time there will be a new quarantine status being announced by the government, I feel a nine. Right now, I'm more of a six. No? See that little snake in picture number six there? I, I, I will say that that is COVID-19. Learning to live with it. Learning to live in the better normal. That, you know, COVID-19 is just in the corner. But what I can do is to follow health protocols. Those were my experiences during the pandemic. What could be your experience? Maybe you can write down in the comments below what pictures or what picture re you resonate with in your experience with the pandemic. Next, I wonder what were the feelings you experienced during the pandemic? Did you feel angry? Irritable? Empty? Isolated? Uncertain? Scared? Depressed? Sad? Lonely, anxious, trapped. Okay. I experienced all those kinds of emotions during the, the pandemic. And it's okay. It's said that we are in a time where this is a stressful event. And to be able to feel this way is a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. What, really hap what, what is really happening right now is we are all experiencing a collective grief. Okay? Grief happens when we experience loss. What were your losses brought about by the pandemic and the lockdown? Some plans for the future? Summer vacation? Family members? Friends? Some of your dreams, your birthday party. When we experience some loss, we experience grief. And grief is a normal reaction when we experience loss. And Elizabeth Kubler Ross identified five emotions that we feel when we experience loss. And other theorists added two more. Uh, components when we experience loss. Maybe at the beginning, we would feel shocked. So we feel, I felt shocked when I know of someone who's, who, who suffered no, of, of COVID-19. And I even have friend, a, a friend who died of COVID-19. And I was shocked. Uh, so shock is an initial paralysis at hearing the bad news. I was in denial also. No? I thought that in the first two weeks, it will be fun. That, hey, it wouldn't, it wouldn't reach an outbreak for us. But we suffered, right? It did. 
I've been angry. I've been angry to the government on how um, they responded to the pandemic. In fact, our family do not have any quarantine passes. And then I also experience bargaining. Bargaining in a stage is where you would do something in order to, um, to get away from that experience. Uh, so th this is a stage where I said, okay, I promise I will never go out. I will follow protocol so that maybe in two weeks, the lockdown will be over. And it's already been seven months. There were a lot of times I felt depressed too, sad, that I just want to sleep the whole day. And that is okay. Because we are really in an abnormal situation. And that is a normal reaction. But over the months and over the days, there were also times that I started to test. You know, maybe I seek out for new ways to cope. I seek out of new ways to live my life. So I test. I test if this is okay. I started jumping rope and it had a good effect on me. What are the things that you did that help you cope during the pandemic? And last, little by little, there are also stages of acceptance. Realization that, hey, the virus is really here right now. And it's finding new ways of moving forward. Now, we think that grief follows certain stages. But in fact, when we experience grief, it is not as linear. It is not as simple as what we'd like to be. Grief is actually very, um, it's very disorganized. You can start with anger, then be depressed, and then maybe later tonight there's an acceptance. But tomorrow, because there's a new quarantine status, no, you will be in denial again of what is happening. Then we bargain. Then we become angry. Then we, there's acceptance. No? We think that grief works in a linear way. But gubot pas lukot pala ang grief. How grief actually works is that we bounce back from one emotion to the other emotion. But, but let's look at the other side of the coin. Let's change our glasses. Let's see what we can find. What were the feelings you also experienced during the pandemic? Was there a time that you were interested at something? Maybe a TV show or a news or a hobby or a new activity, a new book? Was there a time also during the pandemic that you feel blessed or excited for the next day or that you feel loved by the people around you, by your friends? Were there also time in the pandemic that you feel inspired, hopeful, spiritual, grateful, optimistic, and serene? Write down the comments below. What did you also feel or experience during the pandemic? And this is very interesting because... Yes, we experience negative emotions during the pandemic. We also experience positive emotions. And I realize that in reality, and a lot of times, we experience mixed emotions. An event may elicit multiple emotions all at once. We feel grief but we also feel blessed and grateful. Okay? And emotions are actually, I learned that emotions are actually very fleeting. This, af this afternoon, I might feel depressed, but along the way, 
there might be feelings of um, spirituality or optimism. Okay? And then maybe tonight we might be angry after hearing the news or irritable towards our family members. But there are also times that we feel loved by our family members. So emotions are actually very fleeting. And we are not our feelings 24-7. You are not depressed 24-7 because there are moments where you feel optimistic, hopeful, grateful, blessed, interested. Right? So previously, I asked, what were your losses brought about the pandemic and the lockdown? I'm asking you now, what are the upside or the silver lining that was brought about the pandemic and the lockdown? You were able to spend time with your family. I was able to learn a new skill, new recipe, new skill of jumping rope. I lost weight. Some of you might um, watch new movies. Okay? Some of you might Learn how to navigate your learning management systems like Google Classroom or Zoom. And that's very interesting that you learn these things because of the pandemic. Some of you um, had self-care time. Some of you were able to rest well. Although there were also losses, there are also upsides to it. It is like two sides of the same coin. There, an event, there is an event, and this event is a potential traumatic event, but it can also be a potential for growth. Right? So I learned that an impact event has the capacity to be traumatic, but it is also the opportunity for growth. Very interesting. In every event, there are the prices we pay and there are also the benefits we enjoy because of an event. Every moment, there's always a price that we pay and a benefit that we get. Unfortunately, or I don't know, fortunately, the opportunity of growth is not automatic. We need to make a conscious choice and effort to look for it. Our brain or our mind is wired differently. Our brain or our mind is wired to look for the negative for survival purposes. Here's a very good cartoon that looks at brain, look. Not now. Can't you see? I'm busy. The brain is hooked at looking at the bad side and having a difficulty looking all the good side. This is what we call a negativity bias. Negativity bias is how subconsciously we give more psychological importance to negative experiences than positive ones. Even if the positive experiences had the same intensity and it affects our behavior too. So we are really wired no, anad ang ato ang mind to look for the negative. And what is the purpose of that? For survival. We always look for the negative because we're on the constant lookout that, hey, something will bad happen, will happen. And we're always, now that there is a pandemic, we always, parang we are always on the, um, we're always on the lookout of that bad thing. So, our mind is constantly watching for the bad things. And that is what we mean by a negativity bias. Okay? Another example of negativity bias. No? If we experience a moment where it is negative, we feel stressed and we react to it. And we actually lock it in memory. This is just a, a simple diagram. And then we search for the next negative experience. Funny because... If there is a positive experience, it goes past through our brain. Okay? We don't acknowledge it. So 
when people talk about positive, positive, positive to us, we don't listen. We say, eh? But when someone tells us one positive, it is true. I am a failure. Did you also experience this? Having that negativity bias? So what do we do? I learned that we need to rewire our brain to spot for positivity, to spot for good things, and things that will make us feel good and happy, and importantly, that will support our well-being. We need to... Um, the mind is like a muscle. Okay? Since our mind was not trained to spot for positivity, we need to train to spot positivity. We need to rewire it. How? Now, let me show this first. What do you see? Comment down below. In front of you, you can see what? Some answers would be, you can see a face. Some answers would be um, a man facing the wall and painting the wall. Or an Eskimo facing the wall. Interesting. Because there are actually two things, or even more, that you can see through this picture. And when, we, when you first saw that this is a face, and then you saw the Eskimo, you say, wow, yeah, I've never seen that before. How about this? What do you see? A lion. Yes, there is a lion. Yeah, yeah, a lion. But there are other things too. Were you able to see the bunny or the rat? Aha. Yeah, right. Naaman di ipod ang bunny or rat. And when you see that, it changes your perspective. Right? It's different now. This is my favorite. This picture is called The Dolphins Making Love. What do you see in front of you? Right. A couple making love. A man and a woman maybe making love. Right. <laughs> Funny because this was shown to adults and to kids. Na? Yung mga kids na wala pang mali <laughs> And they found out, studies have shown, that when this picture were shown to adults, they will say, two people making love. But when this picture was shown to kids, they would always report dolphins. Were you able to find the dolphins? How many dolphins were you able to find? If you're going to focus on the, on the white aspect, you will see the couple making love. But if you look at the black component, it is, you will see, you will find the dolphins. And I think there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dolphins. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dolphins. Right. With my experience, some of you might have a hard time finding the dolphins because really, our mind was stuck at the couples who, fall, who are making love. So sometimes it's very difficult. No? When, we, when our perception, when our perspective is hooked to something, for example, a negative perspective, sometimes it's very difficult to shift our perspective to a new way. But once we are able to shift our perspective, we say, ah, you're right. And that experience is called a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift happens when you see things from another point of view that can make such a difference in our attitude towards others. Okay. Wow, that's a paradigm shift. I wear, I wear glasses. Uh, I... And um, growing up, um, I thought that, hey, this is the world in front of me. A little bit blurry with race. Okay? But 
when I wear the glasses, the world around me is so much clearer and no race. Right? And that is a shift. Be- my world is so much better. So paradigm shift is like it's like um, having new lenses in seeing the world. There are times that, you know, my, my eyeglasses are old that I thought what I see in front of me is the normal what the world is like. But when I change my glasses to new prescriptions and I can say that, ah, the world is so much brighter and clear now. That is what we mean by a paradigm shift. Now, something to think about. Yes, shit happens, but shifts also happen. Shit, we cannot control it, but shifts, we have control. Right? So when we change gear, it is always in our control. It will not move. So I learned that what are the paradigms about myself that hinders my well-being? What paradigms about myself supports my well-being? When I think about myself that I am a bad boy, I am unlovable, I am unworthy, does it support our well-being or hinders it? What if I think of myself that I am lovable, that I am a good guy, that I can make it, I can do it. If I'll just put in my effort, I can do it. Is that, a, is that belief system or paradigm helpful to my well-being or not? How about our paradigms of other people? Does it hinder or support my well-being? Do I trust my family members? Do I trust my neighbors? Do I trust the government? What are my paradigms about my family, about my friends, about my neighbors, about the police, about the community, about the barangay, about the government that hinders and what other paradigm supports our well-being? Okay. How about our paradigms of life? Do we see that life is difficult or life is fun? So I learn really to keep the paradigms that supports my well-being. And if it does not support my well-being, I learn to shift paradigms so that a paradigm that is hindering my well-being can now be supportive to my well-being. What paradigms are hindering you? And can we shift that, change that to a paradigm that is better for your mental health? So, how do we spread positivity in the better normal anyway? Hmm. Optimism, hope, compassion, kindness, and love. These are character strengths. These are mindsets. These are behaviors. These are um, feelings that will help us. No? that will help us flourish in the better normal. And I love this one. Let's first discuss number one, optimism. What is optimism? Optimism is a mindset reflecting a belief that the outcome of some specific endeavor or outcomes in general will be positive, favorable, and desirable. What does that mean? It means that... It's always looking at the brighter side. Yes, there is a storm, okay? But the storm has rains, 
but we know that after a storm, there are also rainbows there. Okay? We know that there is a storm, but there are also parts of the storm that is not raining. Okay? So it's a belief that the outcome of some behavior or, or the outcome of our efforts will always yield something that is positive, favorable, and desirable. Huh? It's not only about an event, but optimism is also about people. Huh? It's believing that people are also good. You're optimistic about this person. That this person is actually also kind. This person is actually also good. What no? man tam? We are not believing na kani siya mtauhan kay mangingilad. That is not optimistic about a person's behavior, right? It's optimistic. Being optimistic is also giving the benefit of the doubt. Na atay feeling na. Um, Sus, mangilad mang yun siya. No? But we give them the benefit of the doubt. Na, na, no. Maybe na lang yun siya gipinagdaanan in his or her life. That is what optimism means. Okay? Believing in goodness. Believing in brighter days. Okay? Martin Seligman, one of the happiness researchers, said, that life inflicts the same setbacks and tragedies on the optimist as on the pessimist, but the optimist weathers them better. In a study, in a laboratory study, um, two groups of people, one group they were optimists and then the other group were pessimists. They took a test of optimism and this and they separated the optimist and the pessimist. No? But both groups were given a virus. They were injected the virus in their nose. In fact, according to Martin Seligman, it's very similar to uh, coronavirus, but not as intense. So they, they, in, they were injected this virus in their, in their, through their nose. And some of them were actually sick. Because of the virus, they found out that when the pessimists were asked, How are you? they would complain a lot. They would say, Oh, my body is so, um, so, so tiring. This sickness is so bad for me. But the optimists would actually um, down regulate the emotions, whereas the pessimists were over exaged their feelings. So the optimist would say, yeah, I'm sick, but, you know, I can do it. The same impact event, but different ways of experiencing it. The optimists are more realistic. They're more hopeful of their situation. The pessimists are more complaining are more exaggerated on their feelings and emotions. Interesting. Hope. What is hope? For a better normal, I think it's very good to maintain that hope. Hope is the belief that I can do it. And then number two, it's an, it, it does not stop there. That it's, it does not stop that, you know, I, I believe I can, I can, I can. But it's also the belief that possibilities are limitless. Huh? That there is always a way. So these two things we call we must have the willpower and the way power. Hope is something about our goals that we have the will to finish it and the way to finish it. So it's very, um, it's very um, apt. It's very apt to be hopeful right now no? during the pandemic. It's a belief that, hey, I will survive this. This is a difficult time. I will just weather it. 
okay nila gini, mahuman nila gini. Okay? So I can, I can, I can. But it's also about there are other ways. No? Kung sayup ang kanina solution, apalagin ay napalagila impamaagi. Okay? I will try this one. I will test this one. I failure. Okay. How about trying this? This is the way I cope. I listen na pod. How about trying this? Okay? That possibilities are limitless. People who actually thought of committing suicide have been said that they are hopeless. They want to give up. They want they would just want to end it. They think that they cannot do it. They cannot weather the life. Okay? And what else? Aside from they think that they cannot do it, they also feel that there is no other way. That maybe the only way is to kill oneself. There is always a way. There are always ways. So this is a time where we would ask for help because other people may help us, right? May be able to help us to find you ways to survive. So how to survive the pandemic and how we can live for a better normal we must always keep that hope alive. Optimism generates hope. Hope releases dreams. Dreams set goals and enthusiasm follows. Okay? First, we must be optimistic. We must be able to see the good side. Once we see that good side, once you see that light, that bright side, we can say, oops, there is another way. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And when we have hope, okay, we can set new dreams. And dreams can translate into goals. And then we will be having fun, achieving those goals, and then we will be happy. Right? What else? Show compassion. Compassion means allowing ourselves to be moved by the experience of others. Compassion is really experiencing from where they are right now at this very moment. There is a saying that we are all in the same boat with different storm. Okay? But Damien Barr in April 21, 2020 tweeted that we are not all in the same boat, but we are all in the same storm. Some are super yachts. Some have just the one oar. So during this pandemic, we are not in the same boat. I heard, I'm just going to read it, that we are all in the same boat. But it's not like that. We are in the same storm, but not in the same boat. Your ship could be shipwrecked and mine might not be, or vice versa. For some, quarantine is optimal. A moment of reflection, a reconnection, easy in flip-flops with a cocktail or coffee. For others, this might be a desperate financial and family crisis. For some that live alone, they're facing endless loneliness, while for others, it is peace, okay, rest, and time with their mother, father, sons, and daughters. Some are concerned about getting a certain egg for Easter, while others were concerned um, if they have enough bread, milk, and eggs for the weekend. Some want to go back to work because they don't qualify for unemployment and are running out of money. Others want to scream at those who break the quarantine. 
Some are home spending hours a day helping their child with online schooling, while others are spending hours a day to educate their children on top of the 12-hour workday. Some have experienced a near death of the virus. Some have already lost someone from, from it, and some are not sure if their loved ones are going to make it. Others don't believe this is a big deal. Some have faith in God and expect miracles during this 2020. Others says, say the worst is yet to come. So friends, we are not in the same boat. We are going through a time when our perception and needs are completely different. Each of us will merge in our own way from this storm. It is very important to see beyond what is seen at first glance. <laughs> Not just by looking, but by seeing. And I will add, not only seeing, but in feeling. We are all on different ships during this storm, experiencing very different journey. Let's everyone navigate their route with respect, empathy, and responsibility. Being compassionate is not judging their experiences. Being compassionate is understanding, oh, unsa magudde ito ilang experience. Being compassionate is not judging them that kato sila mga gahi magito sila ulo. But being compassionate is understanding why they choose to go out. It's Realizing and understanding, looking at the different sides on why Cebuanos would go out. Is it because gahit gid silag ulo? Or there are other factors that are the reasons on why people would go out? Huh? We become angry on why people um, will play, um, will gamble, no? Will gamble um, even this quarantine. Bawal nga eh. Gahig, bawal nga lumabas, lumabas talaga. Being compassionate is understanding from their perspective. We, it's partly shifting perspective, huh? but it's also understanding where they're coming from. I think it would be great to show compassion to others. After understanding where they are coming from, the next is to be kind to them. Compassionate, diba? It's just understanding them, experiencing what they're experiencing. But kindness is the quality of being nice, friendly, generous, considerate. Okay? If we have extra, we give it to them. We be considerate to them. If we still have extra, maybe we give them more time. It is taking care and helping others to be happy and to flourish. Okay? It's taking care and helping others to survive. I like this, I like this photo here because, you know, instead of of um, policing no? um, those people who are not wearing masks, putting them in jails, okay? or fining them, find, find, giving them a fine, fine, sorry, not fined, <laughs> giving them a fine, why just not, why not we give them, um, why not we give them mask? Diba? That is what it means to be kind. Instead of putting them in jail and pabayron sila because they were not giving masks, it could have been so much easier for us to distribute masks. If we see someone walking without a mask, give them a mask. That would have been a kind act. 
how can we be more kind during the pandemic? And moving forward, how can we be more kind? Studies have shown, studies in happiness and well-being have shown that the fastest way to be happy is to help someone else, to be kind. Uh, and studies have really shown that if you want good and flourishing relationships, not necessarily um, romantic relationship, but friendship, good relationships with friends, good relationship with your colleagues, with your teammates, okay? You need to be kind. You need to be friendly, generous, nice, and considerate. Um, you need to greet them good morning. Uh, when they ask you a question, maybe you also need to answer them. Okay? When they offer you something, maybe you also need to, instead of snubbing the person, maybe you also need to accept it. That is what it means to be kind. And kindness is related to love. Okay? Love is experiencing positive resonance shared with someone else. Okay? What does that mean? No? According to Friedrichson, she is also a... a happiness researcher, uh, she said that we experience love when we experience positive emotions with another person. Okay? So this is my favorite picture of my family. I'm showing to you my family. And I like this one because we are silly here. Okay? So every Christmas, we meet up, we take pictures. About, parang, we just being silly with one another. So this is an experience of love because there are positive emotions. It's fun. Okay? So when you go out with your family to the beach and you experience happiness there together, then that is love. When you have Zoom meetings or video chats with your classmates and friends and you were laughing, you shared interests, may it be Korean drama or money heist or whatever that is that you experience about your hobbies that is love in there okay when i'm able to read the comments below after this video and i feel excited and grateful for your comments this is love i am i usually say that um i am a part-time psychologist full-time lover and what does it mean to be a full-time lover? A full-time lover is actually collecting memories of loving moments with other people. Be it dinner, video chats, family. Huh? These are collecting moments of happiness with other people. That is love. So when you share optimism with another person, optimism and hope, there is love over there. So for example, there is a, there is a person, a friend of yours, who is um, very down. And you shared optimism and hope to this person. You were giving, you were giving him hope. Hey, okay na. Just hang on. That time is a loving moment. When you show compassion and kindness to your friends and classmates or even teachers, that is love right there. Okay. So if you have a chance, always choose love. Because I always choose love. Because I always have a choice I choose love. That's my motto. In summary, how do we shape peace together in a better normal? And these are my 12 lessons. Number one, right now, we need to acknowledge 
that we experience losses and then we are grieving. We need to grieve before we can move forward. We need to understand that the losses were not okay. We need to be at peace with it too. Okay? We need to grieve. And we need to understand that grief is not linear. And wala namang timeline sa grieving. Okay? Some of us might grieve very briefly. Others might take some time, depending on the event that, they ha that happened to them. Okay. Um, in reality, no, we experience mixed emotions. We experience both negative and positive emotions. And emotions are very fleeting, right? Emotions can change. And we can easily shift from one emotion to the other emotion, actually. But we need to make it a choice to be able to shift from one perspective to the other. An impact event can be traumatic, but it is also an opportunity for growth. We need to understand that what we are experiencing right now might be an opportunity for us to grow. It might be difficult. Huh? Not all of us might reach that point, but we hope huh, through the help of others, to, through therapy even, that we will be able to learn something from this experience. That when we look back at 2020, no? Makin nyo ta, sus, may gani, nakasurvive ko ad to. And to be able to lo look for the opportunity of growth, we need to rewire our brain to spot for positivity. We need to train our brain. We need to change perspective. We need to experience a paradigm shift. Okay? So how? What can we do? By reflecting on our paradigms, what paradigms are hindering and what paradigms are supporting. What else? After reflecting, then we practice optimism. We keep that hope. Okay? We show compassion, including ourselves, and then others do acts of kindness. And last, always choose love. That is how we shape peace together in the better normal. What do you think? Show to me, share to me your comments below. I will be glad to go over it and read it. How do you feel after this talk? I'd want to know how you are. Are you excited? Joyful? Optimistic? Hopeful? Do you feel loved? Compassionate? Inspired? Insightful? Grateful? Confident? Did you feel serenity? Loving? Comment down below. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am Neil Steve Quintanar. I flourish. I inspire. You may, um, you may reach me at nsquintanar at gmail.com. So thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you for listening. I hope you uh, continue to be hopeful and optimistic this pandemic. We will end this together. We will have a better normal soon. Thank you very much, guys. Bye.